What is up beautiful people? It's your girl Cam and I'm back with another video. Today I want to talk to you about all the great books I read in March. So welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cam. This is Peace of the Plans. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I hope that you find something here that inspires you. If you do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I post new content right here for you. If you are a OG subscriber, girl, welcome back. <laughs> Let's get into all the books that I read in the month of March. March was a very good reading month for me. I had lots of really good books. So I read uh, 10 books and they are First Lie Wins, A Love Song for Ricky Wilde, Queenie, Black Buck, My Dark Vanessa, Kai K, Daisy Hates, No One Needs to Know, when Women Were Dragons, and Tress of the Emerald Sea. So let's get into my uh, actual reading pages here, my trackers. So I did read every day in March. Super excited about that. Uh, here are the days I started and finished my books. And let's get into the first line. So I had a couple of really cute first lines. So for um, the love song for Ricky Wilde, the first line was leap years are strange. <laughs> definitely, because if you've read a love song for Ricky Wilde, it's magical realism and it was definitely strange and very good. The next one I want to share with you is if you want validation, use your social media. That comes from No One Needs to Know, which is a thriller. And the first line from Daisy Hates is, no guns at the dinner table. That's my one rule. <laughs> that was a good book. I'll talk to you about it more when I go through my reviews. And then from Kai K, the first line is, I was born on the full moon under an auspicious constellation, the holiest of positions. Much good it did me. <laughs> that was very good. So I'll talk to you about the details on my stats at the end, but let's get to the quotes. My favorite quote from the month was, I had wondered in the weeks leading up to the birth, whether I would be a good mother. What if I was too strange, too warlike or rebellious for it? That's from Kai K. That's my favorite quote for the month. And then here are some other ones. In the land where everyone screams, everyone is also slightly deaf. <laughs> that is from Tress of the Emerald Sea, another very good book. Here is a rather lengthy quote, but very good one from a love song for Ricky Wilde. Your tenderness, whether your focus is on the care of a single flower or me, his gaze was unwavering. Ricky, you've turned my world upside down. For so long, I've lived life like it was something to endure, to push through. But with you, I know how precious it can be, and I refuse to live in a world without you in it. Ooh, if a man said that to me, <laughs> I don't know what I would do. Okay, here's another quote from Queenie. Is this what growing into adult woman is? Having to predict and accordingly arrange for the avoidance of sexual harassment? Mm, is it? Is it? That's from Queenie. Queenie was a mess, y'all. And the last quote I have documented here is, my teeth are status quo and powerful, also known as straight and white. Okay, if you get it, you get it. All right, let's get into my book reviews. So I did a two page review for a love song for Ricky Wilde thinking that this was going to be my favorite book of the month. I did this book review maybe about halfway through the month and no other book was even coming close to Ricky Wilde. Um, however, <laughs> one of the last books I read for the month just ran this book down. Like in a track meet, 
just ran it down. But I regret nothing. I don't regret giving this book two full pages because Tia Williams has written a magical realism love story that is just delicious and uh, delightful to read. The characters are intricate. The story is imaginative and kind of has a, a fantasy sci-fi element to it. And even over and above that, it's almost as if Tia has written a love story to uh, Harlem or a love story where Harlem is a main character in the story. And I absolutely love the way she talked about the history of Harlem, Strivers Row. I love how she focused on architecture and just the richness of Harlem. So I absolutely regret nothing with giving this book to a two page spread. So let me talk to you about this uh, book just briefly. And I really feel like the less you know about it, the better this book is. There are just some books that are like that, that you don't need to know too much going into it. What I will say is that Ricky is the youngest daughter in the Wild family. The Wild family has a, um, like a chain of, for lack of a better term, like a chain of funeral homes. That is what their family business has become funeral homes and uh, Ricky is expected to own her own funeral home and continue the family business. That is not what Ricky wants to do. Ricky wants to be a florist. Okay, she loves flowers. She loves taking care of flowers, growing flowers, making beautiful, unique floral arrangements. And of course, her family is not very happy about this. They want her to continue the family business line. But she makes up in her mind that she is going to go her own way, uh, fulfill her own dreams. And she opens a flower shop in Harlem. And the place where she opens the flower shop is very important. Okay. <laughs> And uh, the people that she meets are very important when it comes to fulfilling the whole destiny of this love story. And I think that's really all you need to know going into it, um, because there's so much that is uncovered and revealed. And just the ride of the story is so much fun and it's it's lighthearted in most places and it's fun and it's um it's joyful and it is magical. It's magical. It's a magical love story. I thought it was going to be my number one, but it did not end up being my number one. So let's continue so I can reveal <laughs> which book was indeed my number one for the month. All right. So next we're going to talk about Queenie and Queenie is, <sighs> Queenie is a hot mess. <laughs> Queenie is a mess. I had no idea really what this book was about. I didn't read too much uh, of the uh, description of the book. I didn't read any reviews. I just heard people talking about it, saying it was a good book. And so I decided to jump in and read it. So Queenie is, uh, when, the, when the novel starts, a relationship that she is in is coming to an end, or the guy is asking for a break. And... Um, Queenie just goes into a tailspin after that because she's trying to fill the void that was left in her life from this breakup with other relationships. And um, what she discovers along the way is that is not going to fill the void. That is not going to heal her. Um, and it's not going to make her feel better. It's not going to bring her joy. And so the whole journey is what she finds that really does fulfill her. And so it, it really is a good, a good story. It's a good novel, but it's a wild ride, y'all. <laughs> Queenie is wild. And throughout the majority of this novel, she is a hot mess. She does redeem herself in the end, but throughout the majority of this novel, she is a hot mess. And I think she's in her late 20s. So I mean, you know, she's entitled to be a hot mess at that age. <laughs> All right. I think I gave this one four stars. 
Oh, and by the way, I did give uh, a love song for Ricky Wilde five stars. I mean, I think it goes without saying the way I was gushing about it, but I just want to let you know I did give it five stars on Goodreads and I gave Queenie four stars. Next is Black Buck. And I did read a few things about this book before I got into it. I read the description and I read a couple of reviews and people were comparing it to Get Out and I by Jordan Peele. And I really didn't see that. It was a very good book, but I did not see the connection between this story and Get Out. Like it wasn't scary. There was some racial commentary definitely in there, which I guess may be the, may be the comparison. But um, in this story, Black Buck, a young guy named Darren um, is working in a coffee shop and he's approached by a tech CEO to come and work for him. And he discovers that he does really have a knack for sales. And a lot in this book is about how to succeed in sales. And even though it's fiction, there's a because I've worked in sales before. I know that a lot of things he was saying in this novel are actually true about how to be successful in sales. Darren ends up being the only black person working for the tech company and he deals with some microaggressions and then he decides to make some changes in the organization and uh, make some changes in his community and there's this battle between um, this new person that he becomes as he moves up the corporate ladder and his homeboys from the neighborhood like has he sold out <laughs> is he you know does he think he's better than everyone else in the neighborhood now because he's become a quote-unquote success so um there's a lot of examination of that and what he does with that um that feeling or that um that contentiousness between that contention between himself and his neighborhood and where he came from so it's a really good book i gave it four stars um it was it was kind of funny at times it was um an examination of a lot of uh, microaggressions in the workplace that african americans face sometimes and uh yeah it was a very good read so black buck by mateo Ascaripor. Ascaripor. i hope i'm saying his name right but it's a very good book. I gave it four stars on Goodreads. That's Black Buck. Now, I happen to be watching a uh, YouTube uh, content creator, and she was talking about My Dark Vanessa. This was nowhere on my radar, but just listening to her talk about this book made it sound very interesting. Um, a lot of people have read it because this book has been out for a minute, I think. But um, it is a story about a young girl who is groomed by her uh, 40-something-year-old English professor at a private boarding school for girls. And y'all, it is heavy, heavy content, heavy material, but it's so compelling and so intriguing to watch the process of this grooming unfold and to hear the character Vanessa, her take on the situation, because it's very interesting and it might not be what you think. Um, yeah, I think I gave that one four stars or maybe even five stars. Let me see. Yeah, I gave my dark Vanessa five stars. It was well written. It is very difficult to read. So I I don't recommend this for everyone because I'm sure it would be triggering for a lot of people. Um, but it was just a great examination. Yeah, and it was it, it was tough, but it was well written. The story was compelling. And Vanessa as a character is so layered and complex. So I gave it five stars. It was a very, very good read. Okay, near the end of the month, I read this book that's been on my TBR for a long time. And it's called Kai K by Vashnavi Patel. And y'all, 
This book right here, I don't think I've ever read a book that was this epic. Like it followed this woman, Kai K, almost her entire life. So Kai K is considered a villain in, or she's considered evil in uh, the Hindu belief system from my understanding, just from what I understand. So this author, Vaishnavi Patel, wanted to reimagine Kai K's story and kind of tell the backstory of why she did some of the things that she did in her lifetime that made people look at her as a villain. So Kai K is um, the only daughter of um, her family. And as typical tropes go, what happens, you know, back in the day, the father wants to marry the daughter off to bring peace between two communities uh, or for financial reasons. And uh, this is not what she wants for her life, but she understands that this is her role in the family. But when she goes into this relationship with this man, she changes the game. <laughs> she changes the game. She makes sure that even though she's doing something that she doesn't really want to do, that she's getting something out of it. And not just for herself, but for her family and for her community. When I say Kai K is a boss, Kai K is a boss. The way she's written in this story, and I, I don't know her real mythology story, but in this book, she is a boss. <laughs> I absolutely loved this book. I gave it five stars. That is Kai K. I highly, highly recommend it. I will tell you this though. It did take me a few chapters to get into it. I don't think I really got into it until around chapter six or seven. But by that time, I was like a fish on a hook. <laughs> it was so compelling, so uh, well written, very um, lyrical. The writing was lyrical. It was fantastic. You know, there were fantasy elements, magical elements in it. Just a well written book, hands down well-written book. That's Kai K by Vashnavi Patel. All right, my next book is Tress of the Emerald Sea. And this was such a beautiful, cozy fantasy, y'all. I loved all of the characters. This um, band of pirates that had these almost impossible missions to accomplish and they were up against so many obstacles because they're trying to help Tress accomplish this one big mission and all of the characters were lovable. Um, it was another one that was fantastic, fantasy, uh, just magical. The writing was humorous. Oh my gosh, the uh, the narrator in the book was just hysterical, <laughs> talking directly to us, the reader, throughout uh, the story. Such a good book. This is another one that's been on my TBR for a while, and I'm so glad that I read it. I think I gave this one four stars. It was a very good read. Very good. Next, let's talk about Daisy Hates. So last month, I talked about Magnolia Parks and how I thought the people in that book were so toxic, the relationships were toxic, but that I was going to give the next book, Daisy Hates, a try because um, I heard it was about a different group of friends. And I'm so glad that I read this one because it was so good. I gave this one four stars. Daisy Hates is uh, such a, a rich character. Um, her family are like into the mob or like into this gang and they are art thieves and 
the book is just so action packed and high energy, very entertaining. There is a little bit of toxicity in there, but nowhere near as much as Magnolia Parks. So I'm glad that I continued on with the series. I will be reading the next book because I do want to know what happens to Daisy. There's somewhat of a cliffhanger in this book. So I will continue reading because I want to know what happens to her. So really good. Uh, I do recommend this one, Daisy Hates. I, you know, I don't think you can really understand what's going on with Daisy unless you read Magnolia Parks. So, you know, do with that what you will, because I did not really enjoy Magnolia Parks that much. But Daisy Hates is a great character. I love her family. Love the action. Four stars. And finally, my last review is for No One Needs to Know. I have to have some thrillers in my TBR for the month. I read two this month, but the one that I chose to review is uh, by Lindsay Cameron. And this one is about a community that has this, um, that has an app that you can use to post just random comments on and uh, you can post these comments with anonymity because you don't have to use your real name and you can say whatever you want on this app. You know, people are posting things like secrets, um, affairs they're having, um, people they don't like, insults to other people because they are doing it anonymously. This book is about what happens when that cloak of anonymity is lifted. <laughs> And there's a murder and you got to figure out who done it. It was so good, y'all. This was a good thriller. I also read First Lie Wins, which is on the Reese Witherspoon uh, book club. It was one of her book club picks. I did not enjoy it nearly as much as this book. I actually, I think I gave that that uh, First Lie Wins like three, three stars. It was just, it was just an average book to me. This one was a page turner. So interesting, so engaging. I, I did not guess the plot twists and the whodunit. It was definitely a four star read for me. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. All right, y'all. So those are all of my book reviews for the month. And my number one book for the month is Kai K. It was so difficult for me to come to this conclusion but I have to be honest with myself I thought Tia Williams book um, a love song for Ricky Wilde was going to be my favorite of the month um, like I said in the beginning I regret nothing with giving these two pages for the review because I loved um, every minute of that book I loved the romance especially the the love for Harlem and for its history but Kai K was epic. It was absolutely epic. I've never read anything like it. And it is definitely my number one for this month. So let's go back and take a look at my stats. And I read 10 books this month, bought five books this month. Total pages read was 3,783. I think that's a little bit less than I read last month. I read for 31 days. My favorite book was Kai K. My least favorite book this month was First Lie Wins. Not that it was a horrible book. It was average, but it was just the least favorite of all the books I read this month. My average star rating was pretty good, 4.3. My favorite character was Kai K. My least favorite character was Sage Vamadeva. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Oh, and my favorite word was Flanus. Mm -hmm. Flanus. It's a noun. It's French. It's an idler, a dawdling observer, usually found in cities. And that comes from a love song for Ricky Wilde. Someone who is an idler, a dawdling observer, usually found in cities. All right, so let's go ahead and put my favorite book on the bookshelf. I mean, y'all, I already had a copy of uh, Ricky Wilde printed out thinking she was going to be my favorite book. But I just have to be real. I have to keep it real. I have to be honest. Um, 
as I was reading this, I was thinking, oh my gosh, is this, am I enjoying this more than I enjoyed Ricky Wild? <laughs> It was making my heart hurt because I love Tia Williams writing so much, but this book cover will not go to waste. I'm going to add this to my rainbow spread and I'm also going to add, I'm going to use this as my, um, I think my purple, it's got a lot of purple in it. So I think I'll use that as my purple book cover and then I'm going to use Tress of the Emerald Sea as my green book cover. So let's do both of these while we're here. Let's put the rainbow books in first. Okay, so on this page, I have got a little um, a little game that I'm gonna play throughout the year to try to find books that have the colors of the rainbow on it. So I know I said purple, but I feel like this has got more, it has both blue and purple, but I think I'm gonna go with the blue because I think it's more bluish. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna add this on this tracker page. So I turn it in the right direction and add it right there. And then Tress of the Emerald Sea is an obvious green. <laughs> I don't have to even think about that one. So I'll keep track of this um, rainbow tracker and I'll add some more books later. But let's go to my favorite book, bookshelf, and let's add Kai K to the shelf. So excited, this book, y'all, if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. It's such a good, especially if you're like, um, if you're hesitant to get into fantasy um, or if you love fantasy or if you're you know, trying to read a different genre that you haven't read before, I highly recommend this book. It is so, so good. So that is going to be my favorite book for March. This is Kai K by Vashnavi Patel. And that's going to do it for me for this video, y'all. I want to thank you so, so much for joining me. Let me know down in the comment section if you have read any of the books that I read this month. Um, also, what you're currently reading. I would love to know because I'm always looking for good book recommendations. Don't forget to leave me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time. I hope you guys have a great week. I hope it's full of love, joy, and most of all, peace. See you next time.